<laughs> Jesus Christ, immediately flips upside down. What's up guys, Truman here, welcome back to another video. This is going to be a take, uh, about five takes, not not that bad. Um, first hurt three times I tried, there was, a, there was a massive parade of kids that was walking down the street and it was uh, kind of difficult to hear or repeat myself over, over the screaming and I lost my train of thought. But today I kind of wanted to talk about the fact that I really fucked up. Um, I was really ignorant and arrogant of all the different things that will happen in the first few days of restarting a new challenge after you've not done it for a long period of time and I really wasn't prepared for what was going to happen and uh, well after the first 24 hours it was okay um, it was just a normal thing I, I kept on doing some of the old mistakes of just like opening up old tabs and going to the usual sites to search the usual things and stuff like that one day I'll be stupid enough to tell you exactly what I search <laughs> um, <laughs> it's all about health. I actually said this in a previous video: is that the more and the more unhealthy you are, the more fucked up your searches are. Because <laughs> I tell you, when I'm doing a fast, I I am just a straight mesh. I I'm just the most Christian person. Like I have the most simple taste whenever I'm doing a fast, or if I'm doing like in a really healthy diet. But if I haven't been eating properly, or if I've been all all over the place. You want to, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, not look at my history, but still. Um, so I was doing all that stuff and um, I just had to start catching myself and saying like, okay, now remember you're on a challenge, remember you're on a challenge, because I haven't done this. I haven't really done NoFap in about five, six months. So I became really, really complacent about how easy it would be considering I've done it before. I reached 890, big fanfare about that and made loads of videos about it. And so it's very easy to forget um, all the lessons that you've learned after you've sort of, after you sort of got there, you know what I mean? After you sort of got to a point where it's like, hey, I've got it under my belt. So for the first, so for the amount of outtakes I've done, man, I understand. So for the first 24 hours, it was fine. And then I woke up the second day and I started to think about every single hot girl that I had met. Every single one. Where are they now? What are they doing? Like, what do they look like now? And I just, my, my brain was just off on fantasies. And what happened after was pretty strange. And I'd really love to know why it is that only specific people actually get this. But I was filled with so much energy and motivation to do something. And I think a lot of it was thinking back and, and looking at where lots of other people have been in their lives and sort of comparing and all the sort of unhealthy habits of looking at other people's lives and stuff like that. Um, but I basically was like, I'm going to make a name for myself. I'm going to do something. I'm going to, I'm going to fucking put a dent in the universe. I'm going to, I'm going to do something. So for the first two hours of yesterday, um, I was just like, searching career opportunities, looking at my finances, planning out the year. Like, I want to do something. I want to go somewhere. And it's very, very similar to when, whenever I quit vaping for a period of time, and this goes back to the whole dopamine detox thing, is that when you cut your brain off from very short-term releases of dopamine, you basically train the brain into looking for long-term releases of dopamine. Um, not specifically, but you know what I mean. You trick your brain into liking harder and harder things and finding pleasure in struggle. And that's basically what I felt, super intense for like the first two hours. The problem, and this is why I did not learn from my previous videos was that, and also from my own previous experience, is that starting any new challenge has to be stress-free. If you, and this is why I, I feel sorry for, or sympathy for people who are trying to do sort all, like who are really, really sick and they're trying to do all these new diets, but they've got like five kids and they got, they're working eight, nine days a week. And it's like, it, you know, if you're in a stressful environment, it's super difficult. Because I tell you, I had probably one of my worst days at work in the last month, two days ago. And I was just recovering from that. And because of that, I just started drinking. And I forgot about NoFap. And the rest is history. And it was sort of like, I just called myself afterwards like, oh shit, yeah, I'm a NoFap. <laughs> oh shit, like, I was actually meant to be doing that. I, I really should have actually considered what the fuck I was doing. And uh, so I promptly set about deleting everything. Um, cleared my history, cleared, you know, cleared all sorts of stuff, cleared out loads of folders that I that I had accumulated of stuff, and then I realized that like I really need to be taking this seriously because this shit isn't easy, and it can, it can, and I, I honestly thought to myself, mm, I don't know if to tell my subscribers, just like go silent for a few days and then post, you know, no fab day three and 
you know, just pretend like it's not there, like, you know, just do what, do what a lot of people, like that old YouTuber that I, years ago I, I saw this female YouTuber uh, who was going and doing the whole nofap thing, and who was just, I don't know if I'm, if I'm slightly jealous, but getting loads of views because, like, on your cover photo was you sitting there with, like, covered in mayonnaise, like, nofap day 38, and she's relatively attractive, so it's like, oh, look, she's using her sexual feminine trying to get loads of views. Try not to be salty. Try not to be salty. But one of her, pretty good YouTuber, I hope she's doing well, all that stuff. But, like, she was deleting all of her old videos. And every single time she'd failed, she'd delete, like, like a week's worth of videos. And not many people were calling it out. I mean, after a while, people were calling out, like, why are you deleting these things? Um, I think she was trying to maintain this image of, oh, look, I'm a perfect YouTuber. I don't fail. Everything is great. And I mean, it's like, look, if you fail, say, say something. If you fail, say something. But pretending like nothing happened and just totally lying about it, it's just like, who are you, you ha is that how you see your fans? Just people you can just lie to? And it's like, so that's why I said, and I said like, failure is inevitable in some cases. And thinking that you're just gonna sit there and be like, oh yeah, everything is gonna be great. I'm just gonna steamroller right through it. It's gonna be absolutely amazing. It's absolutely nonsense. The same thing with anything in life. Failure is inevitable. And I remember back in my previous days that I would really beat myself up for doing it. I'd really be like, oh no, what have I done? What have I done? What have I done? It's all over. I've, I've relapsed again. And then after a while, I would just sit there and say like, you know what? Does the world end it? But God damn, did I get a taste of the actual benefits. Like, like it, was, it was like I was driven like, like you know, like, oh, like, like, like a man on a desert. I, I hope you can't see the party going on next door. I hear it. Um, I was driven like a man like a thirsty man in the desert finally seeing an oasis when I, when I woke up. And it's something that I have not felt in such a long time. So I am super excited to get back on it again. Now at the moment, it's the end of day one. Well, you can't tell because it's summer, but it's the end of the day one. Um, so I'm gonna, just gonna keep on going with it. But I tell you, man, uh, this is why I think a lot of people, um, it's really fascinating how different people have different experiences. Because I know that this is short lived, that what basically happens is that, um, it's almost like this new release of energy, because it's not really contained or channeled into anything for the first few days, is really profound and it really, like, it's really, it really stands out to you. And I think what people experience as a flatline is really just the body saying, okay, I've got, I've got all this energy, it's time to focus it on, on different things. It's time to channel it into different things. And it sort of disperses throughout the body. And, um, I found that when I'm actually doing this, this challenge, going a bit off into the spiritual end of it, I can actually channel, I can actually channel this energy into things that I actually want to do. I can, I can turn it into just physical energy. I, I can turn it into just general energy to do things and sort of move up. But I can also channel it into willpower as well. And um, this is sort of something that I really can't really explain, but something I can do. Anyway, sorry about that. Day one, again. And let's see how long, see if I can go more than 48 hours.